Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to compare the 10 watt versus 20 watt X-Tool D1 Pro diode laser. So let's get to it. So thank you so much to X-Tool for sending us these two lasers. A few weeks back we got a 10 watt from them and now we have a 20 watt laser head. Yeah, they sent us a 20 watt laser head that we can install into our D1 Pro that currently has the 10 watt diode in it. We're just gonna do some comparison as to how much more powerful and capable the 20 watt laser head is compared to the 10 watt. I think it's pretty cool that you can just change out the laser head to get some different capabilities out of your laser. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how easy it is to change out the laser head. So should we we get to unboxing? Let's go. Okay, so we got everything unboxed. You could see that we have our much larger 20 watt diode laser here. It's actually physically larger than the 10 watt, but it has the same connector. A little bit different from the 10 watt laser head, you have the ability to adjust your focal length on this side. So we noticed on the other side is where this will connect and uh, hold the system on the bracket again on this side that's how we focus our 10 watt diode laser but for this one you can also use this side for fine adjustments so again not much movement there but you can move it six millimeters up and down for again that fine adjustment and then of course it's got hash marks here to see where you're at. So pretty neat. Should just be plug and play. Though it does come with a new power brick because obviously this one's gonna have more power needs than the 10 watt laser. So we will make sure we switch over to this upgraded two amp brick. It comes with another air nozzle connector for a pneumatic hose, four millimeter inner diameter, six millimeter outer diameter. Comes with a spare lens holder and uh, some spare grub screws. Of course, very detailed instruction manual that shows you exactly what you need to do to connect everything up. So pretty neat. Thanks, X Tool. All right, so this is what we're gonna use to do some testing here. It's just some hardwood scrap that we're gonna use. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up with a design where we can basically draw a box that comes out of the material. That way we can measure how far down or how deep the laser goes at 100% power. So we're gonna do several passes. So we'll label them one, two, three, four. And uh, we'll do that with the 10 watt laser head and we'll do it with the 20 watt laser head. And we'll go ahead and set up a design real quick for that. All right, so quick change of plan. Because the wood is gonna be end grain on one cut and cross grained on another, it wouldn't be a fair comparison to just go in a different direction for both lasers. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the lasers cut in both sides on both types of grain. So I'm gonna just do one pass and a two pass on the same side of each. So not sure if that makes sense right now, but it will here when we get to cutting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is use the 10 watt laser to engrave my markings, but we're not going to cut any of the test boxes out just yet because I have to configure those for one or two passes. So I'm just gonna make sure the output is turned off on that and that the output of our engraving is on and I'm gonna set the wood out for the engraving.
Okay, so now the engraving is done. What I did in Lightburn is make sure that I put each of the 10 watt boxes on the same layer so that I can turn layers on and off and get just the 10 watt. And then later on, I can turn the 10 watt layers off, turn on the 20 watt laser with appropriate lines so we can get our results. So right now I'm gonna turn on our one pass and two pass at 100% and see what those look like. So there's our 10 watt one pass and 10 watt two pass line. You can see there is a difference between two. We'll measure those with a caliper later. But now what we need to do is change the tool head to the 20 watt and then go ahead and run one and two pass of that to see how much of a difference there is. So we're gonna use the same technique we used in our unboxing of the 10 watt laser to get our crosshairs just right. So go check that out if you wanna learn how to do that. Okay, so let's see it from the side. Oh yeah, there's a difference. So that's one pass with the 10 watt, two passes with the 10 watt, one pass with the 20 watt, and two passes with the 20 watt. Okay, so it looks like one pass with the 10 watt went about 1.1 millimeters. Two passes with the 10 watt went 1.75 millimeters. One pass with the 20 watt went two millimeters. And two passes with the 20 watt, just about 3.25 millimeters. That's a sizable difference there. Now that's the cross grain. Let's see about the end grain here. One pass with the 10 watt went one and a half. Two passes with the 10 watt went about 2.4 millimeters. One pass with the 20 watt went about 3.4 millimeters. Surprisingly about the same for two passes on the 20 watt. So it didn't go any deeper. And that's probably due to focal length. I imagine you could go deeper if you keep progressively moving the laser head down slowly. But again, that's still pretty good results for two passes. The 20 watt certainly cut it out. This is half inch plywood. This is pretty impressive. I was not thinking that we'd be able to cut out. At 10 passes, this thing can cut out half inch ply, and it looks like we probably could have gotten it with a little bit less. At eight passes, it cut out almost six. I bet if we did this with seven passes, we could cut out half inch ply. That's insane to me. As for the 10 watt laser, we didn't get anything. Close, it looks like we got to right about there or so, but certainly you can see the difference with the 20 watt laser power versus the 10 watt laser power. Both same settings at 100% and 1200 millimeters per minute. So, what are your thoughts on our new 20 watt laser head? Well, it is a cutter for sure. The 10 watt laser we have found, as you saw in our materials test from our first X-Tool video, we're able to get kind of a spectrum of color with very low percentage of the laser uh, usage. And it can cut, the 10 watt laser head obviously cuts materials, but the 20 watt, wow, when you turn up the power on that, it'll cut through some wood pretty quick. We were able to cut through that half inch plywood relatively quickly, and again, we had the speed turned up to 1200 millimeters per minute, I believe. I mean, that's pretty quick. Uh, we could obviously slow that down and do less passes and we can cut that out. But what we did off camera was cut out three quarter inch hardwood with just about 15 passes. And really the only thing that we did is after 10 passes, we lowered that adjustment on that side of the 20 watt laser down just a little bit so that we moved the focal length of the laser head down. And after 15 passes with the same settings as the half inch plywood, we cut through three quarter inch hardwood, which is pretty impressive for this diode laser. Another thing we noticed is on the 20 watt laser head, we weren't able to dial it back as much as we were with the 10 watt system. Uh, so we weren't dialing it back to like 7%. We weren't marking our wood at all like we could on the 10 watt system. Not sure why that is, if it just needs an extra bit of power to, to boost up the, the laser to actually fire. But we did notice that is kind of a difference. We had to kind of increase the power a bit initially on that lower spectrum of percentage power. But again, when 
you push it up to 100%, it's, it's powerful. I think the 10 watt system is really good at dialing in some engraving and marking, whereas the 20 watt really shines when it mm. comes to cutting. Yeah, and it's really easy to change the heads out. So if you have a 10 watt D1 Pro and you wanna change that out to a 20 watt to get some different capabilities, you can just buy the 20 watt laser head and install it really quickly. Just you know, snap in the wire and put on the gantry and change out the power brick and you're good to go. So overall, which do you think you'll be using more often, the 20 watt or the 10 watt? Well, I'll probably switch in between depending on the type of project I'm doing. If I'm doing some engraving on a very large piece of material, I'll probably use the 10 watt system because we can really dial back down the power usage to get some really light results in the engraving. But if I wanted to cut material, I'm absolutely going to go for the 20 watt because it cuts so quickly. So kind of depends on the project. So a huge thanks again to Xtool. We'll have a bunch of links of the products we're using on their website in our description if you want to go check it out. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.